there everybody! Welcome to Scantily Clad in the Kitchen. My name is Diva LaVita and I'm here today with my very special guest. I'm Rosie Roche. Hooray! As many of you have probably noticed, we are not currently in the kitchen. We have broken the mold. We've made our way to the living room area because uh, we're going to do something very, very special and never seen on this show before. Yes, uh, I am a tea enthusiast. I used to work in a tea shop. Um, where I learned about loose leaf tea and why it's better than tea bags for the first time. Oh. Um, and uh, now I've gone even from Western style brewing, that is tea in hot water for like two minutes, to um, traditional uh, style brewing. So we're going to do a couple different versions of that today. Neat. Yeah. I am definitely set in a Western brewing ways because uh, I... I get my tea bag out of my little paper packet, and then I put it in uh, tepid water, mm -hmm. and then I sip my horrible beverage. That's that's <laughs> usually how I drink tea. So it doesn't have to be horrible. <laughs> um, there's, you know, plenty of tea bags, especially the ones coming out now that are like the pyramid ones that mm -hmm. have like you can see the whole leaf inside. It's not just tea dust, like powdered yeah. broken leaves. Um, anything where you can actually see the whole plant is going to be better. Okay. Um, but uh, today we're going to do just a few different methods of like higher quality uh, tea. Uh, so we're going to start with matcha. Have you heard of matcha? I have heard the word before, but okay. I do not know what it is. So matcha is a very, very finely ground uh, green tea leaves, specifically grown to be matcha. They're shade grown uh, for the last couple weeks before they're harvested, which increases the amount of... Um, uh, chlorophyll okay. in the leaves that makes them so green and dark. Um, it increases the nutrients in the leaves. Mm -hmm. So this is a canister of matcha, and it's oh. so fine it actually, I don't know if you could see that, it There's actually light dust puffs up when you open it. Risen from it. That is a beautiful color. Yes, so this is Very a bright. completely natural color. It's not dyed or anything. This is just ground uh, leaves and uh, they are really high in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. It's um, very grassy, very vegetal when mm -hmm. you drink it, um, and it uh, has very high caffeine and theanine levels. I enjoy high caffeine. Yeah, so it's like it. When I say very high, it's very high for tea. So it's like having a cup of coffee. So what I'm doing right now is I'm straining it. This is already more work than I would have ever put into tea. You've, you have two apparatus there that I've never seen before. What, what is that, the, the hooky thing and the strainy thing? Um, so this is just a bamboo scoop that uh, gives me about the correct amount of uh, matcha powder. Mm -hmm. And then this is to get rid of any, um, uh, it's just a sieve. You can use any sieve that you have mm -hmm. um, to just get rid of any lumps that might be oh. in it. So it's like sifting your flour when you're baking. Okay. Um, so do you not want lumps? No, this we don't like want lumps. This feels like such a dumb question. Do you not no, want lumps? that's okay. Yeah, uh, we don't want lumps. Okay. Um, and it's, some people don't strain their matcha. I do. I prefer it because I think it makes less work for me in the next step. Now, what is this? This is a bamboo whisk. Okay. Um, so it's been, uh, cut from a single piece of bamboo and then slotted and shaped, uh, into this shape. It's a very fine whisk. I find it works better than a metal whisk for matcha just because it's much finer and it breaks up the particles better. And we're actually going to be aiming to get kind of a foam. So... So we are using um, warm, uh, hot, but not boiling water. So okay. this is about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you never want to use boiling water with any kind of green tea because it will scald the tea. That's why some people think they don't like green tea is because it tastes bitter. It's because yeah. it's scalded. It's burned. Um, so any type of green tea you have, you never want to go over 185. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I'm doing now is making a zigzag motion, getting a froth going on here. You mm -hmm. get like a crema, uh, sort of like you would get on top of espresso. Mm -hmm. um, and then we want to make sure we break up any of the bigger bubbles, it should be all small bubbles. Little tiny bubbles. Yep. That is very frothy. I don't. I do not know what to expect when yeah. you use that word. So that is 
the texture that we're aiming for. It's so pretty. It is pretty, and you can have matcha straight like this. Mm -hmm. I actually drink it straight from the bowl, um, or you can use it, um, you can actually add the powder directly into smoothies, mm -hmm. um, or you can make it a latte by adding frothed milk, um, or just plain milk, you don't have to froth it. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have almond milk today. Um, and I would encourage you to try it by itself first, yes. and then we can add a little splash of almond milk. Oh, nice. Cheers. Thank Cheers. You. It smells delicious. That is so good. Yeah. That is like the best green tea I've ever had. Yes. It's like having 10 cups of green tea at once because it's so concentrated, and because you are actually consuming the leaf, you're not steeping it and then removing it. Mm -hmm. That's why you get all the um, benefits of the leaf, because you're actually eating the whole leaf. Yeah. <laughs> this is like if uh, Popeye the Sailor Man drank tea, it would be this. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, mm. So this is That's so my favorite way to start my day. Yeah. Because it is a kick of caffeine, um, but uh, tea, and especially matcha, has uh, theanine in mm -hmm. it as well as caffeine. And theanine is, I call it the anti-caffeine. It's the part of tea that historically would be known as the chi of the tea. It's the calming part of it, the centering part of it. It's why people use matcha for meditation. Because um, then the caffeine keeps you awake, but you don't get the jitters and you have the theanine to keep you focused and mellow. Oh, yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so next, we will move on to an oolong. So this is a medium to... Um, uh, high oxidized oolong okay. and what that means is green tea is unoxidized uh, and oolongs are partially oxidized and black tea is fully oxidized so oxidization is what happens with any sort of uh, natural material when you leave it out exposed to oxygen so when you mm -hmm. leave a slice of apple and it starts to turn brown yep. that's oxidation so uh, we have a partially oxidized, more oxidized than not, <laughs> oolong. Okay. <laughs> and this is a uh, ruby gaba oolong from one of my favorite tea producers, uh, or tea sellers rather, uh, Mayleaf in Campton in London. And um, this is a, a gaba oolong, which means that the tea tree that it was harvested from is at least 200 years old. Wow. Um, so the older the tea leaves are, uh, the more... Uh, flavor that all the roots can get into the minerals of the mountains that they grow in mm -hmm. and they pull up all the minerality and the depth of flavor uh, because it's an older tree and it has deeper roots. Yeah. So uh, what I have here is a um, Yijing teapot or okay. uh, it's also called a purple clay teapot. So this is clay that's harvested uh, from a specific region in China and the tea um, seasons the pot similarly to the way you would season a cast iron sure okay um so the tannins and the oils in the tea after many many uses i've had this one for maybe two years um they seep into the clay and they uh they flavor the tea that you continue to brew in it oh wow i did not know that that was a thing i'm learning so much today <laughs> uh so this is our i actually should have poured water in the teapot before to heat it up, but I forgot. Um, and that's just fine. Yep. So um, I have this at just over 190 um, because it's not a black tea. So again, we're not going to use completely boiling water, but mm -hmm. it is hotter water the more oxidized the tea is as a general rule. Okay. So. That goes straight into our, our tiny pot. Mm-hmm. Um, so the teapot is sitting on a tea boat, um, and that is just a little moat to catch the water that is always going to spill in Gongfu style brewing. Um, and Gongfu style tea brewing, um, Gongfu and Kung Fu, the martial art, they are the same word. Um, it just means skilled. So it is skilled brewing. Oh, wow. And it was originally invented to compensate for uh, lower quality tea. So the only way to get good flavor out of them was to brew with this method. Mm -hmm. um, but it's since been adopted for higher quality teas because it does bring out all the different flavor notes. Wow. So it's a very short brew time. Yeah, that was barely any time at all. 
and I am pouring this into my Gongdao Bay or Fairness Cup um, because that way everyone gets the same um, steep level. If I were to pour into one cup and into another, mm -hmm. the second cup would have been steeping a few seconds longer. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we get the same, <laughs> <laughs> the same amount of steep. Um, and you can smell this if you want. Ooh, that is fragrant. Yeah, so we do have a leaf popped out. Um, so wow. you can see it has expanded quite a lot. So this is just one steep and it has expanded from this little dried and compressed oolong leaf to here and it will continue to expand as we brew it. I feel like there's a there's a dick joke in there. <laughs> but I'm not gonna say it. If it gets hotter and wetter. <laughs> Something about growing and showing. I did it. I said it anyway. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna and then I did. So I will pour you a little oolong. So this is just Ooh. our first steep. So the thing about Gong Fu style brewing is whereas with western style you have a small amount of leaf to a large amount of water mm -hmm. uh, with a single brewing. With Gong Fu style you have a large amount of leaf to a small amount of water with repeated brewing. So mm -hmm. I could brew this same oolong five, six, seven, up to ten or twelve times. Wow. Um, and we would just uh, increase the steep length with mm -hmm. each subsequent brewing. Yeah. Um, but we'll just have a couple of this one. And you can have your first steep. Oh, cheers. Cheers. It smells very nice. It's very delicate. Yeah, it's quite delicate, especially after matcha, because um, matcha is such a strong flavor. Yeah, the matcha was very intense by comparison. Yeah, and this is um, our first steep. So if we get our second steep going. The second steep will reveal different flavor notes and different textures and different flavors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, do you usually... Okay, also my very western style of drinking tea. Yeah. There would often be like a pastry accompaniment or a tiny snack to go with it. Does this style also have that tradition or is that... Uh, not necessarily, not no. no. Uh, you could have it with a meal. Um, it sort of depends on what kind of tea you're having because... Mm -hmm. Um, I've done like tea pairings and like tea dinners before, but you have to be uh, smart about what food you're having it with because since you aren't adding things like cream and sugar, mm -hmm. um, the taste of your food could easily overwhelm the taste of the tea and then you might as well be drinking water. Oh, sure. Um, so uh, oolongs tend to pair well with lighter things like white fish, mm -hmm. um, uh, less fatty, less rich. Um, whereas if you were having something like pork belly, um, you could have it with a black tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But not necessarily a pastry per se. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Um, gonna down that. And. It's so warm. Oh, yeah. Ooh, you okay? Yeah. It's delicious. <laughs> Bracing. Yes. I'm awake. And this is our second steep. So it is actually a little different in color. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why I prefer a, a clear Gangdao Bay is because I can see the color of the tea liquor mm -hmm. um, and assess how how I've brewed it. And I have had once or twice, I tr I, I've gotten pretty good at it timing wise, but I have had once or twice where I like, I pour it in here and I can tell it's too pale and I just pour it right back in the pot and let it steep longer. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, it smells different this time. Yeah. It's like a completely different tea. Yeah, uh, bigger body, mm -hmm. more minerality. Um, I taste things like, and this is it gets like wine, like with tasting notes. Um, for me, I get like like uh, stone fruits, like plum and apricot, like mm -hmm. the the taste of the pit. Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, you and a hazard a hazard a, a a tasting note. No. <laughs> tastes like tea. Tastes like tea. Tastes it's like delicious. Tea. Mm. But yeah, the worlds of uh, tea and wine can intersect with the tasting notes. If you've ever seen like a wine taster's wheel with all the uh, uh, suggested mm -hmm. um, flavors, there are also ones for tea tasting. Oh. Um, and while it can seem silly and pretentious to be like, oh, it has very dark chocolatey notes or whatever, um, having a vocabulary for what you're experiencing and what you're tasting um, 
and smelling mm -hmm. uh, can actually increase your ability to articulate what it is about a tea that you like mm -hmm. and help you find more teas that you like in the future if you know that those also have those tasting notes. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> right now I'd just be like, I like the one that tastes good, mm -hmm. and that's not super helpful. This is Puar. Um, it is tea that is aged. Um, this one has been prepared, pressed into a cake, uh, which is most commonly the way that you'll find Puar. Some, there are loose Puars, but not many. Mm -hmm. Um, because this cake compression makes it easy to store and easier to age. Uh, so this is a Puar cake. I think it's from 2007. Um, the maker's mark is imprinted right into the tea there. Wow. Um, I have literally never seen anything like this before. Uh, it's very fun. There are some people who... Um, started out as loose leaf tea enthusiasts and now drink exclusively Puar because, um, again, like wine, there is mm -hmm. no end to the variety and the depth and the different types. There's um, raw Puar and what's called cooked Puar uh, that are processed differently. They have very different flavors. Mm -hmm. um, and this, it does just tell you a little bit about uh, how this tea is made. Um, and it says it in both English and Chinese. The more whole the leaf is that I take off of this cake, um, the more broken the leaf is, the more tannins and like bitter flavors you're going to get. So okay. if I get more whole leaves for us, then it'll taste uh, rounder and sweeter. Mm. Um, so you can get a very high quality puar and then mess it up by just garbaging <laughs> into it and breaking up the leaves and making a powder out of it. Yeah. And then, it's, then it, you've wasted it. See, I'm glad you're here, because I would definitely be that dum-dum who's just like, I just need this in jars, and then it'd be terrible. Um, yeah, so I've left it in cake form because it can continue to age this way. Mm -hmm. So if I have this same tea and I'm really uh, miserly about it and I still have this in five, ten years, um, the flavor profile will have changed because it will have continued to age. It's kept in paper, so it's mm -hmm. porous casing. Its environment can affect it. Um, so this tea should taste different than when I had it a few months ago. Yeah. It should taste different when I try it again uh, a few months from now. Yeah. Um, or you can drink it every day. Yeah. It doesn't, it's sort of up to you. <laughs> so I, I know you said you keep it in this paper, but is, do you also have to, when you have it at home, like put it in a special cabinet or away from sunlight? Or... Um, yeah, away from sunlight is good. I keep it in um, cardboard or uh, uh, unglazed pottery mm -hmm. uh, because it's porous it allows oxygen and microbes to move in and out of it freely okay um, there are different schools of thought some people prefer to keep their uh, pores airtight um, some people use uh, cigar storage like humidors oh, yeah um, so that they can regulate the humidity that it's being stored at this is my preferred method mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a few different options mm. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this Puar knife, which I got from Amazon. And uh, you can also use a letter opener. It's the right shape, some sort of uh, flat, small blade. Okay. Um, and we're going to break into the tea cake and break off a piece for us to brew today. Ooh. So then I'm going to break this off. Keeping Based on how you were stabbing this cake, I was like, how much tea are we getting today? <laughs> we're getting a little more. We're getting a little more than this. Um, but uh, this is about right, so it's not a clean break. I've wiggled the leaves free, trying to keep them intact. Mm -hmm. This is such a treat. Oh my goodness. Um, I love sharing pours with people. They are uh, very unusual. It's sort of like if someone's only ever had... IPAs and you give them a stout, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a completely different beast than the tea that we're used to. Yeah. <laughs> and we will be using a glass teapot. Ooh. And this bamboo tray. What is this? Um, so this is a, a water catching tray. Um, it has space under here mm -hmm. to catch any overflow because we are going to be rinsing this tea. So the rinsing uh, will open up the leaves and get it out of its compressed state mm -hmm. and it'll also rinse off the bitter flavors and the tannin. So we won't drink the first steep, it'll be a rinse. Oh, okay. And 
is quite large. These are actually stems uh, of the leaves. So that's what's sticking out here is stems. And you can see the different colors of tea leaves here that we're going to be putting in. Um, this is from the underside of what I broke off. So this is what has been protected from the outside. I like being able to see that it, it came from a plant and being mm -hmm. able to see how the how the plant grew. Um, light oolongs, for example, Ti Kuang Yin are especially good for this. I like to uh, brew them a couple times and then take the leaves out and display them because they can be uh, as long as your fingers, um, and you can like show your guests, look, yeah. it's an actual leaf. It's not powder. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I always think of it as being tiny. Yeah. Uh, so this is our rinse. And this is actually, funnily enough, this is too large of a teapot for me. I prefer a smaller teapot. This one or that? This one? is too small for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so this is a rinse and this is our tea pet. This is his only purpose is to be bathed in tea. Um, <laughs> He does not have a name. <laughs> I've had him for like three years and he does not have a name. Um, but he is also made of yixing clay. So with any luck, he will develop a patina and become more beautiful. <laughs> so that was our rinse, which we have poured into the reservoir here. All right, so we'll do a second rinse here. Just to really get this tea to open up. Mm -hmm. We may actually need to refill the water, which is fine. We're going through a lot of tea. And then we'll pour over my little tea pet here. I'll show you a trick with him later. He squirts water. What? Mm -hmm. He's solid clay, but he's, he squirts water. Can you smell that? Yeah. Some people, depending on the poor, uh, describe poor as... Um, uh, mushroomy or mm -hmm. having a lot of umami yeah um, the savory flavor um, and uh, if you over brew it it can it can I mean it can really hit you in the face the other thing about fermented aged teas um, is they can be quite high in theanine again uh, people describing the chi of tea historically mm -hmm. uh, it's what can get you tea drunk which is why some people are into puars, because if you brew this 10, 12 times, you have enough of it, you can for sure get a little buzzy. I feel it in my jaw the same way I feel when I'm getting high. Yeah. It, it, it like affects my jaw and it makes me feel a little bit buzzy, a little on mm -hmm. cloud nine. Not as psychoactive as, say, marijuana, Yeah. but um, for sure tea drunkenness is a real thing. Some people experience it, some people don't. Yeah. It might be psychosomatic. <laughs> I feel it in my jaw and it makes me feel a little high if I have like 12 steeps of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, that'll be a fun experiment for our alone time. Yes. Yeah. So we have our boiling water and um, even though we did our rinses, I am gonna do a very quick uh, steep of this. Um, so once I pour the water in, I'm only going to let it steep for about 10 seconds mm -hmm. um, so that we don't get that overwhelming like kick in the face I was talking about. Do we need new cups? I will put it in the gangdao bay first, but oh, yes, that is what the third cups are for. I'll rinse out the gangdao bay real quick since it has just a little bit of oolong left at the bottom. So as you can see, even though it was only in there for 10 seconds, it's already gotten quite dark, Yeah, quite colorful. I love this color. It's so bright and orange. And again, that's why I brought my glass gong bao bay, because I do have like porcelain ones, but mm -hmm. this way you can see the tea liquor. That's really nice. You can sort of see uh, floating like little tea particles. Wow. Inside. Um, it's quite thick. Um, if you look at the texture of it, mm -hmm. um, and you should feel that when you taste it as well, it should feel like it's coating your mouth a little bit. Like oh. I knew there were different varieties of tea, but this is way more intricate than I imagined. Yeah. I mean, this is just, this is just a, a, a the surface level too. Oh um, I just, I really wanted to introduce you to Puar because most people who aren't into tea have never heard of it. Yeah. Um, and I just find it so interesting. So Thank I would you. recommend taking the lid off of the teapot, go ahead and and giving that bowl a sniff 
um, so you can get that into your nose before you take Ooh. a sip. It is quite strong. It's a lot. Yeah. It's nice, but it's a lot. Yeah. That is, that is, that's got a strong, like a mushroom, yeah, mushroom's like the best flavor I can think of to try yeah. to relate this to. Yeah, um, if we had a tasting wheel in front of us, I would uh, go to a wedge that maybe says something about um, earth or wood, mm -hmm. like um, darker woods or decomposing like wet woods, like a downed tree yeah. in the forest. Um, There's like a... There's like a cheesy element that I would I would. It's wanna... a little funky. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, definitely cheese. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Oh my goodness. But without the sharpness, mm -hmm. it's just got the funkiness, but not the sharpness yes. of cheese. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. This is so good. <laughs> oh it, my god, you guys, this is so good. I mean, you can see why and. So if I was brewing by myself, with this being too big, um, mm -hmm. you know, I would only fill one cup. But you can see why I would brew this 12 times yeah. and have 12 cups in a row and get kind of high from it. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Oh. <laughs> this, man, I'm going to have a difficult time going back to my shitty, shitty tea. It's a transition. Um, I really highly recommend mm. loose leaf teas. There are affordable options mm -hmm. on the market and... If you consider that you're almost always brewing your leaves multiple times, mm -hmm. like I could lay this out, let it dry, and rebrew it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you're really not spending that much more money considering that tea bags are basically single use. Yeah. Um, and I just love it. I mean, I can't, I can't drink uh, tea from tea bags anymore. <laughs> uh, and I've spoiled my husband as well. He can't, yeah. he can't drink tea bags. It just doesn't, it doesn't have the depth of flavor. It's like if you spent your whole life eating cracked singles mm. and then discovered camembert. <laughs> like, just like, I like, oh, back. this <laughs> is cheese. <laughs> like, this is tea. <laughs> this is very much reminding me of like the first time I had really good red wine. And then I was just yes. like, how yeah. am I supposed to drink Franzia now? Yeah, yeah. now you can't have two buck chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm having a similar <laughs> emotional experience right now. <laughs> Yay! I'm so glad. <laughs> this is lovely. Um, and clearly you don't need to add any sugar no. or milk or anything. You could, mm -hmm. um, if you were doing, I've done, uh, uh, oolong cocktails, um, and used it as a mixer in that, make a concentrate, let it brew for like two minutes and yeah. let it be really concentrated and do a marinade for pork or... Ooh. Um, you can even rub the spent tea leaves directly on it before putting it in the brazier or the oven. Mm -hmm. um, impart those deep, funky, uh, fermenty flavors yeah. into your uh, cooking the way that you would with like koji or um, or uh, miso paste, mm -hmm. other fermented foods like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing all of this <laughs> knowledge with us. This is incredible. You're so welcome. I just want to keep drinking tea with you. <laughs> And continue talking your ear off about the tea. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I yeah, love it. so if anyone knows me, they know if they ask me a question about tea that they're actually going to get a lecture. They're going to get a... <laughs> this was just an excuse for me to, like, have you as a captive audience Yay. and talk to you about tea. <laughs> well, I'm super glad we did this because now I've, now I've had some of the best tea maybe that I've ever had in my whole life. This is incredible. Yeah, and I'm quite warm. Like, yeah. I'm quite flushed from this even though we are... Scantily clad. Yes, we're barely wearing any clothes at all. <laughs> yes, but, but I'm ooh. I'm quite sweaty. We might start it... wearing less because that's how warm this is right yes. now. Yes, <laughs> because um, it it warms you not only because of the yeah. actual temperature of the water, but it, it does it has like a warming effect the way that alcohol does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely feeling a little of that right now. Mm -hmm. So if if people want to reach out to you and like learn more about tea and and what have you, is there a place on the social medias where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, find me. At caffeine and theanine on Instagram, and that's spelled out one word. And that is also my craft business, so I post a lot about tea, but I also post my ceramics and my greeting cards that I make. Oh, nice. And so people can purchase those if they like. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm also uh, in the Chicago burlesque scene. Um, I'll be around. Yeah, okay. And you can find me as Rosie Roche in lots of places. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much for being with us here today. Thank you for drinking tea with me. Yeah, we're going to drink a little bit more tea, everybody. Yes, and please. We'll see you next time. Bye.